afternoon and thank you for tuning in to another session of Anointing. I'm Apostle Vincent Akosa of Christ Citadel International Church. We are here in California. I want you to please, um, you know, if you have your Bible, to turn it to First Samuel chapter 7. We'll be reading from verse 2 to 10. Let's hear the word of God. So it was that the ark remained in Kajat Jiram a long time, and it was there twenty years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the asteroids from among you, and prepare your house for the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the bells and the asteroids, and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I'll pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the laws of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that, we may, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now, as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day, and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. <clears throat> this afternoon, I want to once more welcome you and thank you for inviting people to tune in so that we can all fellowship together in the Word of God. The word of God is the express will of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15 verse 4 that all scripture has been written both for our admonition and encouragement. So the thing that has happened before, God Almighty was the one behind it that it did happen. And if we serve him, since the Bible says also in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, the God who have helped others to win battles, even though, that, even though it looked unlikely that they can ever overcome their pain, their challenges, their difficulties, their experiences, the same God is the one that we say. And if we follow the examples of the people who maybe, you know, uh, did certain things that got the wrong way of God and as a result of that suffered the consequences, but they retraced their steps back and also received the rewards, then I want to tell you that you are not far away from your miracle. Let me tell you this. The chief inspiration this afternoon for me in bringing this message to you, wherever you are in TV land, and I'm very grateful that you do tune in because I know God has a blessing for you. God has a surprise for you. God has a miracle for you. But that surprise and miracle is not going to drop from anywhere. It's coming from his way to you. Because there's nothing that was made without the word. The whole heavens, the whole earth, and all that that were are in it were created from the word of God. So how do you expect God to do anything for you without his word? His word is the creating, creative word, agency of God's will. Whatever this word says, whatever God said, it came to pass. So if God declares something today through his word, then you believe it will work for you. Now having established this, 
I'm also very much what, aware that some of you may be out there and say, oh, this preacher is talking. He doesn't know what I'm going through. He doesn't know the painful challenges that I'm going through. He doesn't know my experience. I'm going through A, B, C, D, and all that. Praise the Lord. It is thus established. That battle is not yours. That battle is for the Lord. As we did right here. The point is this. For 20 years, the 20 years, the very people that God has called out and covenanted with them, they haven't worshipped him. They have put God aside and they were following the passions of their hearts. They were serving idols, bales, and asteroids. Because anytime we serve anything that is af, you know, based on our passion, it doesn't challenge our spirituality or moral choices. Any of these idols will encourage you to do whatever you want to do. You know, there are so many people who want to seek what? Get spiritual independence from God and at the same time want God to bless them. It doesn't work that way. You can't eat your cake and have it at the same time. You can never have it. You can eat it and have it at the same time. So it's either you choose to repent, to follow God, or you don't and suffer the consequences. So this is what was happening. The very people of God for 20 years, they haven't worshipped him. They were following other things. The prophet Samuel was living among them. They've been following, worshipping idols. The very, very things God told them not to do. Those were the things that they were doing. And God, the long suffering God, was watching them. So after they had gone around and gone around and they were not seeing results in their lives, they went to the prophet that we need God. So I'm talking to somebody out there in TV land. Maybe you are angry with God. Because there are so many people. If God is there, why is this thing happening? If God is there, why? Is, yes, God is there, but have you made him to. Are you aware of his presence? Are you living your life being instructed by him? Are you living your life very much what? Focus on him. Making him the centerpiece of your life. There are so many people out there, oh, I don't believe there's God because if I, there's God, then why are all these things happening? God is there. But the point is this. You have your own free will. You are living a life independent of him. So if you suffer the consequences, you don't blame him. Children of Israel, 20 years. And this is very much what? This message that talks about the experience of these people in past years is very much the same as we are living in this time. People who don't believe in God, people who don't trust him, people who don't care about him, wait until something happens. Then who? Guess the blame? God. If God is there, why are these things happening? These Christians are making too much noise. If God is there, why are these things happening? He is there. But the point is, if you don't recognize him and serve him as God, how do you receive his power? How do you receive the power of his manifest word majesty in your life? The Bible says, test and see that the Lord is good. And this is an invitation for you to come and test and see that this Bible message that we are bringing to you is authentic. It has healed me. It has delivered me. It has saved me from sin and evil. And it can do the same for you. It can make a difference in your life. I'm not here because of anything. I'm here because I believed in the same very word that I'm speaking to you. If you believe in the same very word that these are the words of God and you change your life, come to Jesus, you are going to have a different experience from this day forward. Instead of following after dumb idols, they don't help. And I know, coming from the third world countries, Sometimes when people are going through difficulties, they are looking for, you know, uh, fortune tellers. They are looking for um, uh, palm readers. They are looking for psychics. They are looking for people maybe with some occultic powers to help them. The point is, if those powers cannot help the people, how can it help you? Because when you go to them, they charge you for a fee. They live by your fees. 
If those powers cannot help them, how can it help you? That is the point. So the thing is, they have to build a clientele to be able to survive. Those demonic, you know, um, occultic practitioners. Give your life to Jesus and stop wasting your time. I know there are some of you out there, you know this message is for you. I see a guy who's watching the TV. It's like when you heard me, you were turning away, but something drew your attention back to what I'm telling you. Yes, you are the one I'm talking to. God wants you. I see tremendous anger and frustration and disappointment in you. Give the battle to him. Trust him and let him win this war for you. 20 years, the children of Israel came. God was at the same place. He hasn't gone anywhere. The prophet said, return to him with all your heart. Not part of your heart, not some of your heart, not half for God, half for the devil. No, with all of your heart. Today, you have to make a choice to give all your heart to God. Not to damn idols, to God. Some of you say, oh, what is an idol? Well, I'm not bowing to anything. Yes, you are bowing to certain things. Anything that you put ahead of God is an idol. Anything that you place ahead of God Almighty is an idol. Anything that you place before the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, is an idol. God said, get rid of those things. You, some of you can be hiding behind certain religions that is not helping you, hiding behind certain you know, cultural beliefs or ethnic beliefs that is not helping you. Get rid of it and come to Jesus with your open heart. Throw them away. Anything that is an impediment, that is a hindrance, get rid of it and come to Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You may not hear me say this thing another time. This may be maybe the last time you may be hear, hearing me, but I know God wants this message to sink into your heart and soul. He hasn't gone anywhere. It is you who left him. He is still there. The same place that you left him, he is standing. He said, come back to me. And ideally, if you follow this, because in earlier chapters, of this same book, 1 Samuel chapter 4, they have gone to war with these Philistines and have been defeated. You see, if the enemy has beaten you back, they have beaten you before, next time he doesn't even need another strategy to beat you. All he has to do is to show up. And the fear of him will, will defeat you. And most of you are ruled by fear. Fear of some things that has happened in your life before. So anytime you get wind of it, you're already what? Defeated. Shakespeare said cowards die several times before their death. So you are being ruled by fear. Oh, fear of this, fear of that. Yes, there may be other people who hate your, your Jesus, hate your faith, hate the fact that you are a Christian and may be threatening you. Leave that battle for Christ to fight for you. He will do it. Trust me. So they came to someone. And someone said, bring all those idols. Let's destroy them. There are some things you have been holding on for a long time. Because of that, you cannot serve God as a Christian. It can be maybe an alcohol problem, maybe a, a moral choice problem, maybe a, a drinking problem, maybe smoking problem, maybe you know, a problem with unforgiveness and bitterness, any of such things. You've been doing it for years. Tell me the benefit. Tell me how much have you been rewarded of it. Praise God. Why don't you give it up? Somebody told me, he says, madness is doing the same thing over and over and over again and getting the same results. So I've been doing something over and over and over and over and getting the same result, that is madness, that is craziness. Because you want progress. Every human being desires to see some advancement, some progress in his or her life. Look, take stock of your life and see how much progress have you made. 
Because the Bible says promotion is of the law. Does not come from the east or from the west, from nobody but God Almighty. So I'm just bringing you a message of hope that will help you to change your life. Make a positive choice today, today, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. As the old proverb says, do not do tomorrow what you can do today. For procrastination is a thief of time. Don't let the devil steal your, your miracle. This is the day of change, a day of surrender, a day of yieldedness, a day of confession and inviting Jesus into your life to come and be and make a difference in your life. And today, brothers and sisters over there, receive this message and let go of anything that has gotten hold of you. Some of you say things that have gotten hold of you. You better let it go and surrender your all. The word is God. Give all your heart to God. Are you ready and willing to give all your heart to God? You've given your heart to things that has never helped you. To worldliness, to lust, to arrogance, to all sorts of things. You are giving your heart to certain religions that has no power in it. It is just a religion. You do things you don't even understand and you can't even question. Christianity is a way of life. We understand what we do because nobody forces us or threatens us with death. If you don't do this, I'll kill you. No. I walk to a church to give my life to Jesus. Nobody chased me to the church. I walk to the church to yield my life because I needed him. And I've been serving him. And nobody has threatened me. If you ever leave, I'm going to do these things to you. No. I'm serving him free with my own free will. That is the liberating power in Christianity. And I'm inviting you to come and share in this blessing, in this joy. You don't say, oh, I have to be in America. No. I have lived in other countries before I came here. And I still had the joy of the Lord in my heart. I was preaching in Africa. In rural Africa, rural Africa, no electricity, no clean water, enduring mosquito bites, sicknesses and diseases. There are times I can't even get food to eat, but I, there was this joy that nobody took it away from me because I had him in my heart. The Bible says in Proverbs in Hebrew chapter, chapter 13, verse 5, it says, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Nobody can do nothing to you because the Lord is your helper. So as we build on, and I have got some few minutes to go, because I want you to what? To get this message, brothers and sisters. It's a message of hope and victory and change. That is coming your way. They listened and gave up all their idols. Today I'm asking you, your idol can be an attitudinal idol, a behavior idol, a moral idol, maybe some spiritual weakness idol, or maybe yes, some of you other may have literal idols. You believe more in your talisman. You believe more in in some occultic something that someone has given to you, a charm or something, give it up today. Give it up. Let it be destroyed. It can never help you. Oh, someone will say, oh, I, this one, my great-great-grandfather gave it to me and gave it to me. It's been in the family for, it's not been the family. The point is this. Nothing is older than God. Nothing is older than God. yes, Thank God for your great-grandfather, but he is dead. But God is alive. The Bible calls him the ancient of days. He lives on forever. Today, be the first. I come from a big family. My father has so many children. I was the first to give my life to Jesus and become a pastor. I want you to join me. We become the first. 
the first fruit for God. And this is my invitation to you today. So you get ready and let us follow this and see the victory that God is going to do for you in your life. If you accept this challenge and not live in fear and not allow circumstances around you to intimidate you. Because when you give your life to Jesus, he will fight your battles for you. So the Bible says the people gave those idols and Samuel took them, destroyed them, and then gathered them to go and pray. Don't just sit down there and say, oh, I've given my life, so I'm sitting down for manna to rain. Get up and pray. Pray with somebody. Pray on your own. Spend time in prayer. Call upon the name of the Lord. Somebody say, I don't know how to pray. Prayer is just like talking. Just talk to God. Go on your knees and talk. Everybody talks. In every language, any language at all, talk to him. Talk to him in your natural language. Call upon his name. Talk. Don't complain. Ask him to prove himself to you, and he will do it. And if the other Christians joined them in prayer. So when they did that and went to Mizpah, the enemy who had fought them before and overcome them came back. Let me tell you, the enemy that we are talking about today will come back. The enemy of lust, of alcohol, of whatever you are giving up today will come back to come and attack you. You better take a stand to resist it. The Philistines heard about it and came back to come and attack them. But the Bible says this time, first time they fought them and they, they were defeated. This time God said, the battle is mine. He thundered from heaven. Israel did not throw even a shot. God sent thunder, thunder bolt, lightning and fire from heaven against the enemy. And then the children of Israel became, overcame them. I want you to live a life of an overcomer. But you can only live this life of an overcomer when you have Jesus in your heart. And you have really, 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 really given up your all. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind to him. You've cleaned your heart and said, today I'm turning a, diff a different person. I'm turning my back to all this and I'm following Jesus. For 20 years, show me progress in your life. 20 years without Christ. 20 years without God. 20 years without his word. Show me progress. Who can go on in life 20 years and prosper without him and not have difficulties? As for me, I need him every second, every moment. Every breath that I take, I can never survive without him. He's the reason why I'm alive. And I've seen battles in my life. I was given up for dead when I was born. They say I will never leave. I'm standing here. Look at me. At least I'm a built handsome. And it's all because of him. He can do the same for you. This is, I'm not here just touting I'm here sharing my testimony. The one who made my life this way can make yours far, far better. Far, far better. And I've not arrived. But at least I have peace and joy because I have been. As I'm winding up, I want to encourage you. My brothers, my sisters over there, leave this battle for God. You don't know Jesus. You have not invited him. Or maybe you used to serve him, but you have turned... I'm seeing somebody sitting down there watching. You are even drunk. I see you sitting among some children watching this. You used to be a, you come from a Christian family, but you are having a problem with alcohol. And even as I'm speaking, I can see tears. Your name is like Rafa or something like it starts with R A F Rafa or Rafak or something. And I can see tears in your eyes. There's hope for you, brother, and all of you out there. I want you, as I've got a few minutes to, to wind up, and before I pray for you, if you have believed and accepted this message, you want to give up, 
and surrender your life to Jesus. Repeat these words after me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I am sorry. I repent today. I give up all the idols in my life. Behavior idols, attitude idols, choices idols, sinful idols. I give them all up for you to destroy them. But I want you, Jesus, into my life. Let the Holy Spirit fill me this day and give me the strength to resist the enemy, to live, to fulfill my calling in you. Thank you for coming into my life. Amen. Father God, bless these, your people out there. Let the power of God come upon them. Heal the sick among them. There's somebody who is having chest pains as I'm praying right now. Heal this person in the name of Jesus. They are supposed to do something for the arteries, open one of the arteries. Heal this individual in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, pour your blessings upon them. Give them matchless blessings and grace in you in Jesus' name. Prove yourself unto them. And as you won the battle for the believers of all, win every ongoing battle for them. That they will have a testimony to spread the word of God everywhere. May God bless you and increase his peace upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and thank you for joining us to worship together. Until we meet next week, please call the number on the screen. Also send a donation to the TV studio. And I know God is blessing you over there. Call in, share your testimony, invite people every Saturday, every Monday, it's 4.30 to come for us to fellowship together. If you live in the Los Angeles area and you don't have a home church, Please come and worship with us in Los Angeles, 915 South Fairfax Avenue. The number is 3102891631. Again, I'm Apostle Vincent Acosta of Christ Citadel International Church. May God bless you. Stay blessed ever. Thank you. Amen.